Good evening from Jakarta, Indonesia. First and foremost, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you for joining us today at the webinar series, How Social Media Help uh, to Save the Environmental, hosted by the Center for Southeast ASEAN Studies Academy. My name is Jihan Herun Amala and will be the master of ceremony for today's webinar. Uh, this webinar will demonstrate the impact of your online uh, action on environmental pre preservation. Uh, additionally, this webinar will also offer uh, you suggestion of improving your upcoming environmental social media campaign so that uh, your voice is heard uh, during the environmental policy process. If you are interested in this uh, webinar and want to learn more, please follow our social media, gcsindonesia.com and uh, website. And then don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel, GCS TV. Uh, Q&A session will be done through the chat box. All participants uh, could write the question in the chat box YouTube live. <laughs> Okay, without further ado, it is uh, an honor for me to invite Madi as a junior researcher at uh, the Center for Southeast Asian Studies Indonesia. Please, Madi, uh, time is yours. Okay, thank you so much, Jihan. So now I will share my screen. Okay. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, so I am Madi, the junior researcher from Center for South Asian Studies in Indonesia. Uh, today, I would like to discuss about the how social media help to save the environment with the case studies from Indonesia. Uh, it is like okay, so. It is the part of my research, and today uh, we will be talking about uh, the answer from two questions mainly. So the first question is. To which extent could environmental social media campaigns in Indonesia lead to make a change in policy? And the second question is, which factors influence the effectiveness of environmental social media campaigns in Indonesia? So firstly, we will talk about the social media activism in Indonesia. And second, we will talk about the effectiveness of environmental social media campaigns from the theoretical perspective. After that, we will be seeing a few uh, case studies from Indonesia. So the first case studies will be the successful success stories of environmental social media campaigns, which succeeded in uh, policy change. And another case studies will be the unsuccessful environmental social media campaign. So after that, uh, from the analysis and from interviews with 10 ENGOs in Indonesia, we will be uh, seeing through the findings. And from then, we can get the factors which influence the effectiveness of environmental social media campaigns in Indonesia. So first, we will start with the how important is social media and why social media is important. Uh, so uh, as you all know, the essence of democracy is that how much uh, the voice of the people are heard by the government and how government uh, take it to their policy making. And so in this 21st century, like the people, how they uh, speak up about their rights and their needs they are very different from earlier times. So in this year, people share their information about their daily life, uh, their struggles, and what they want from the government on social media. And one of the most beneficial things from social media is that people can constantly share some information and also like a wide range of audience can exchange their opinions on them. And also one of the, uh, Indonesia is also one of the country which has like, uh, which has a lot of social media activism. So according to 2020 research, so uh, in 270.6 million population, 196 million of Indonesians are active social media users. So it is like over 70% of the populations are social media active users. And from 2020 to 2022, there is a rapid uh, 21 million race in social media users. And also even alone in Facebook platform, there are over 130 million Indonesian accounts, uh, which is like 6% of the total global users. And also, Indonesia is also named as a Twitter nation because of its addition to the uh, uh, to the Twitter. So uh, it shows that 
how much Indonesian people are relying on social media. So we can see from their behavior that uh, it is different from other Western countries or other countries where like people get information about like, for example, health protocol from Google and other things. But in Indonesia, people get information like uh, for health or like starting from shopping or everything they get from their social media. So they sell uh, things on social media like Instagram and people buy from the Instagram. Also, uh, even for the, the practice of uh, reading Quran, they have like WhatsApp groups and everything. So the information uh, flow in Indonesia is so much depends on social media. And uh, so from 2015 to current, they are the social media most extreme active time of Indonesia. So many people like every social media users in Indonesia, they are like they they involve in one of the group or uh, campaign or like in, in every sector which they are interested. So there are so many social media groups and social media campaigns about every topic. So for example, they are, uh, they are the most famous campaigns in Indonesia, like SAC and IUUPKS, like the campaigns against sexual abuse and reformacy, diplomacy against corruption. And they are campaigns about uh, discrimination and attacks against LGBTQ people, and also campaigns for freedom of religion, freedom of expression and association. There are a lot of campaigns in every sector. And also environmental campaigns are also one of the trending topics. There are so many environmental social media campaigns in Indonesia. And when we see this social media campaign, there are actually two types of environmental social media campaigns. One is the public leading campaign. So public leading campaigns are like, for example, there was, um, uh, there was a campaign named Safe IU campaign, which is like the grassroots. Uh, so then uh, the people in the island, they alone lead the campaign. And then also like uh, they try to look for the information. They try to make it known by the world, like they are the leader of the campaign. And others ones are led by ENGO, environmental, non-governmental organizations. So when we see these campaigns, like the campaigns led by ENGOs are actually more complex and also like big campaigns, which is involved by big cooperations and like issues with the big operations like businesses and also deforestation and harmful plantation, this kind of campaign. Uh, so among the so many ENGOs in Indonesia, one of the most famous is change.org in Indonesia. Uh, so uh, for example, uh, let's see that okay, what they did. And even only in 2019, the change.org in Indonesia, they had four petitions for Indi uh, indigenous people and forests, four petitions for forest fire, two petitions for forest protection, and three petitions for mining the energy. So, uh, so and even only this one campaign, gained more than 220,000 signatures in just a few weeks. Uh, so it shows that a uh, big role of ENGOs and environmental social media campaigns in Indonesia. Although there are a lot of issues uh, and also like a lot of uh, campaigns, only a handful of issues can be handled as people want. So that's why the effectiveness of environmental social media movements are still in question. And we need to find out that what kind of factors affect the success of these campaigns and what to do to make it better. Um, so uh, in this uh, research and discussion, uh, firstly, I will tell you the theoretical perspective, which we'll be using in analyzing these case studies of Indonesia. So there are two theories which we'll be used. The first theory is from the communicative functions of tweets. Uh, so it was, uh, so it is the framework for measuring social media campaigns from the environmental, non-governmental organization. So they, they made a theory from a survey of 100 ENGOs from US. So there are like, in this theory, there are three main functions of the uh, environmental social media campaign. So the first one is information. So the first step of the key function of uh, social media campaign is information. It means that the campaign can give the audience the awareness or that they give information. And another step is community. Like uh, after getting the information, like some of the people becoming in the community, like they join some group or like uh, they get the 
uh, they get they want to get more information about the current news and also like they have interactive communication with other activists. And in the third step, it became the action. So they promote an event or they want to donate, sell a project according to their campaign, also like volunteers and joining the offline events and learn how to help about that. So there are three main key functions. So we will be seeing uh, the uh, case study campaign in which way, in which steps that people uh, gain more, uh, more in these steps. And another one, another theory which will be used is the marketing mix theory because um, environmental social media campaigns are also a kind of marketing. So we will use the marketing mix theory. So it is a list of the important elements or ingredients that make up this marketing program successful. So at first, the theory has four P's. It means product, price, place, and promotion. And later it became eight P's. So people, process, physical evidence and productivity. So when we see these eight P's from the environmental social media campaign perspective, product. Product is the product of environmental social media campaign is intangible. So their product is awareness of people, like how much awareness people get from these campaigns. And price. Price is the non-monetary price. So it includes psychological and sociological cost. And place is the online. And promotion. Promotion can be varied from one campaign to another. Like the promotions can be the, um, uh, what is that? Uh, it can be the photo competitions or the YouTube uh, and like some competitions like video calling or the involvement of some celebrities. So these are the promotions of the campaign. And people, people, they can be the ENGOs, the locals, the activists, and also other public. And also the people can be that uh, if there is an association or the, there's a business include, they are also the, in one of the interest groups. And also the process. In the process, there is like, it started from planning, branding and everything, like starting from there to, uh, to, uh, to the conclusion of that, uh, conclusion of that uh, program. And also uh, in physical evidence, there can be, two kinds of physical evidence, like the real physical evidence, like photos and videos, and also the scientific evidence, like research. So they are the most common found physical evidence in the social media campaign. And another one, productivity. Productivity is the quality of this product, like the force that the social media campaign can do, like uh, not only to force the public to involve, also to force the government to take actions against it. Uh, so these are the eight P's uh, from the perspective of social media campaigns. So from in this research, so there are so many things that which are in common for every campaign. So in this research, we took like four of the P's, like product, the awareness of people, and promotion, the trending of the campaign, and the people. People is the involvement of the interest group and physical evidence. Physical evidence is the physical and scientific evidence. So from these two theories, we will be seeing the, the case studies of Indonesia. So the invo informants uh, that involved in this uh, things are like there are 10 ENGOs and also two academics. So the 10 ENGOs include the, the one of the program from UNDP and Safe Net in Bali, Jiwa Laut, Bioplastic Bag, Jogja Pada, we can into Indonesia, the three store, Waste for Change, Trust Hero, Indonesia Inter Foundation, Madani Circle and Japan. And also like two academics, uh, which involves uh, Depo Negro University and Bodo Moro University. Uh, as an overview from this, from interviews of these uh, 12, 12 informants, so they say that most of the campaigns can build community and many, only can they can do the information of news and inform uh, of the issues, and some can make to the action steps, and only a few can lead to the policy change. So now we are going to the analysis of the analysis of the case studies. So to get the successful uh, successful social media campaign from Indonesia, first we will see the what kind of policy change happened in Indonesia in 2016 to 2020. So there are five. There are five laws which change 
like it is because of the like one of the factors which caused this policy change is the social media campaigns like that. So there are five laws. The first law is moratorium law from Pam White Plantation 2018. The second one is government actions on illegal logging in Riau province 2018. And third, regulation on load construction in forest area 2019. Both is regulation number 26. 2020 on forest rehabilitation and reclamation. And the fifth is the new maritime policy 2022. So we will see the environmental social media campaign, which caused uh, the changes of these five, uh, these five laws. So the first one, so now it's become the story time. So the first one is the Greenpeace Dirty Pan White Campaign against Wilma International 2018. So Greenpeace is one of the most uh, famous uh, uh, in one of the foremost and famous of like in environmental social media campaign. So the first uh, famous social media cam uh, like campaign is, is the against Nestle company in 2008. So they became successful in this Nestle company campaign. And then another one is this one in 2018, Wilma International. So at the start of this uh, campaign, like over 1.3 million people signed the petition calling of Greenpeace, like the, because like to stop the deforestation or, and also the palm oil plantations of the Wilma International. And also not only the petition, like the attributes from Greenpeace, and also like other activists from around the globe, like the climbers from Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, UK, France, and Australia, they uh, like they gather around in Indonesia and also they occupy the Weimar's refineries in Indonesia, like we can see here. So, and also here. And so they climb to the anchor chain of tanker ship, which is transporting palm oil and also prevented it from moving. And also, they uh they uh they painted like uh dirty palm oil like this kinds of letters on their palm oil tank and also there is like a rock band boomerang the rock band is performed at the top of the storage tank together with the attributes and also as we can see here they put the vanilla like drop dirty palm oil now like that so this kind of activities like they got too much attention from the international media and also like they demand to take action so uh so they uh they do not get the success like immediately the wilma pam oil like the wilma international also fuel back against the uh against the greenpeace and also like the the company is like they forced the indonesian government uh to take action against these activists because they are hindering their business like that uh but after a lot of uh, international force, like there is the law became like no deforestation, no peace, no exploitation, and DPD policy. Uh, so the, uh, the policy got established. And according to the H Environment Asia, Asia founder, they said that because of this policy, they get better visuality on palm oil plantation. So this is the first one. The second one is the Jikala Hari social media campaign in Riau province. The Riau province is like it is full of forest and it has an area of approximately 8.7 million hectares. And out of these 8.7 million hectares, 7.1 million hectares is the forest and 3.1 is the, uh, they are the peatlands. And also in 2015, so from 8.7, like 7.1 is the forest. From in, in 2015, like according to the Landsat A satellite imaginary, only 1.6 million hectares left as the remaining forest. So it can be seen as a massive deforestation. Uh, it is because like the company brings, uh, the companies mainly, they are two big companies. The one is RAPP from April Group and another one is IKPP from Sinamas Group. So these two companies bring like Acacia and palm oil, and to plant on this land. So to plant this palm oil and acacia, they had to uh, deforest or they fire the they fire the they fire the forest like to uh, to plant them. So the smoke or the firing or the forest it, it becomes an annual agenda. And and one of the biggest fire was in 2015 and 19. 97,000 victims of smoke haze pollutions were having there. And over 8 
80,000. Over 80,000 people have their respiratory problems and over 10,000 people have their eye problems and many people with their uh, skin irritations, etc. Uh, so it became the hit news. And actually the Jigala Hari is it, uh, like it existed even before the 2015 forest fire uh, because the Jigala Hari is actually like they are a combination of 30 ENGOs, like 30 ENGOs in uh, Rio Island. So they found that this Jigala Hari and they made a campaign, but their actions becoming more popular after this forest fire. And sometimes they will, uh, they do like a uh, collaboration with LAM Rio. And also they are, um, they are campaigns aimed for the social change campaigns. And they use like all media, like all social media, and also include two mass media, Rian Post and Tribune Tekan Baru. And so, yeah, you can see they are at his community on Instagram at Jimala Hari. And also like because of their, their activism, it becomes like 15 companies had their license suspended after this forest fire and four companies were administratively sanctioned, 14 are in the official drafting, administrative sanctions, and 19 companies got supervised by the Ministry of Environmental and Forestry. And so it uh, it shows that they are like they are the Jigala Hari one is a, it is something uncommon because they are not the only one ENGO, but they are a combination of party ENGOs and they are consistently in doing it. Okay, and another one. Another third one is the campaign against road through war heritage park in Papua. So the campaign became popular with this uh, hashtag, Save Papua Forest. It became a hit in Instagram and Twitter and so many NGOs participated. And also the call of like, because of this uh, hashtag, Save Papua Forest, it became like it got the attention of UNESCO and UNESCO called the uh, Indonesian government on Twitter to post the road project to Lawrence uh, National Park. It is a war heritage site in Indonesia, Papua region. And uh, so it is uh, after the UNESCO has called it, the Indonesia government agreed to that in 2019. And also they do workshop with the local governments and other organizations. Uh, the, uh, their agreements include that to stop the road construction, to improve the strategic environmental assessment on infrastructure development in forest areas, and also to develop an accredited training syllabus uh, to the uh, to actually the forest rich province like uh, West Papua, Papua, and North Kalimantan. But after they have agreed that in 2019, the government denied that agreed plan again in 2021 because they said that uh, as you can see here, the so this is the the roads that under construction. And here, the start ones are the industrial development. So the government say that the industrial development is needed for this region. That's why they don't, they cannot stop the, they cannot stop the road construction anymore. So the campaign starts again. And also like the most famous one include a theoretical protest in front of the environmental and forestry ministry. And also these are the most famous signs like Stop Baku Dibu, uh, Save Papuan Indigenous People. So this becomes like famous again. Uh, so uh, uh, again, the UNESCO had to make a second call for that. And then they changed the policy and then the, uh, the policy has been established uh, to uh, for these three agreements. And number four, fourth campaign is the Rehabilitated Utan Mangrove Forest. So the mangrove forest is one of the components of coastal ecosystem. So uh, the mangrove forests are important because they are a barrier to the coastal, uh, coastal abrasion and also about the retraining seawater, seawater intrusion, and also they are heavy charge for the uh, for the locals, and also like mm, uh, so uh, they they have a direct impact of the coastal ecosystem. So expansions of pond lands and logging of mangroves or building materials and firewood, uh, they have a huge damage to the ecosystem directly. So students from Jakarta, Makassar, Riau, West Sumatra, Roche Island, and many other cities, they show that how they are rehabilitating the mangroves. And also they share it on the social media, especially on YouTube. There is, on the YouTube, there are so many videos about how students, um, especially the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and how they are doing uh, for rehabilitating the mangroves. So 
it was like it, it is mentioned as a documentary from CNN Indonesia. So after that, many schools and ENGO participate in that kind of planting mangroves, and they make the cause of their culture as a uh, as an area for like how to make the new uh, new mangrove forest, and also they make it. So after after many times, it became that the, there is a new law and the regulation number twenty six on forest rehabilitation reclamation for that, and the fifth one. The fifth one is the uh, it's a safe shack in Indonesia. Safe shack in Indonesia is back in 2010. The sale tax on shack is the same as the other fish in Indonesia. Although the fish, uh, like the shack, are the, one of the most expensive fish in the world, the sale tax is like very low in Indonesia. So it makes them, um, it makes like there's like a big exploitation of sharks in Indonesia. Uh, so. From the ecological perspective, uh, the sharks are the they are the main predators in the uh, marine system. So there are a lot of smaller fish uh, be, uh, like below them. And if there is like there is a less amount of sharks, the ecosystem became imbalanced. Uh, so it is like it is an important issue. And also Indonesia is a quarter is a place where a quarter of war shark species live. So, uh, and even because of that, like five fourths of all shark species in Indonesia became endangered. Uh, so it is needed to allow the limited shark of fish for domestic consumption. And also it needs us to prohibit the shark finning. Shark finning is something, it is a, a process of slicing the fins of, uh, fins of the shark from the alive shark and then leave the shark to die. Like that. So uh, the shark finning also need to be prohibited because uh, they do it a lot because there is a big market for shark fins, uh, which trade to Hong Kong, China, Singapore, Japan, and Thailand. So, uh, so there was uh, a lot of uh, shark fin trade. Uh, so uh, this person, the Riani Jankaru, so he is an environmental activist. So he started the community of sea sharks in 2010. Uh, so the shift station activists actually they make a lot of meetings with other activists. They travel a lot and also like they call for many times on the Twitter and then they are doing it very constantly. So after seminars, several seminars and also like they all they also do the offline events like theoretical like this uh, in uh, in different kind of cities and also the media highlighted the loopholes of the shark trade like so they supported the uh, safe shark campaign so after like, in 2022 the president signed the presidential regulation number 34 of 2022 on plan of action for the 2021-2025 Indonesia maritime policy. So according to this maritime policy, the many kind of sharks like whale sharks or manta rays, uh, they are all uh, all safe. So these are the successful campaigns which make a change in the policy. And another thing, so we will receive another three case studies, but they are the unsuccessful environmental social media campaigns. Uh, the first one is what is Malawan mining protest. So the what is Malawan mining protest is the campaign uh, led by the public. Uh, so public means that the locals in water Felix. So the water Felix is uh, so they are uh, at the uh, at the bottom of the mountain where the mining takes place. So it's a project in the hills of water, and they did not get a lot of attention from public. So at the time, like. Uh, the Article 162 of Indonesia mining law. So they say that anyone who hinders or disrupts mining activities by permit holders who have met the requirements may be punished with a maximum prison term of one year and maximum fines of 100 million rupees. So actually, it is like it goes against with the 2009 law on environmental protection. Like no criminal charges may be brought against anyone for campaigning for their right to a clean environment. So in in this law, they say that um, the mining company who have already met the requirements, but uh, but in this case, like the mining company did not uh, did not inform the local people that uh, how they were. They will get affected by this project. They only let them know about the positive side. They they told them that okay, after this project, like three districts in Yogyakarta will be uh, will get the energy for that, like that. So they did not know well about that. But after that, when the project starts, 
like they had to suffer that effect. So that's why they uh, they protest about it. Uh, that the offline mining protest and 67 resident of Waters Village, including 13 children, were heavy handed arrested. So 10 out of these 52 people against mining company are charged for violating this article number 152. So there was not enough support from the media and they also did uh, safe water by this kind of social media campaign, but it did not get a lot of attention from the public. And because of the law, like no one can help really. And another one is, uh, uh, another one is a small island fisher petition to end the cost of dredging. So according to the, a lot of dredging permits allow, uh, allowed in 2021, it affects 35,000 fishers. Uh, so they covered a lot of like 3 million hectares of the sea. And then like the fishers cannot, uh, they cannot um, do their business. Like they cannot fish anymore. So the local mass, like the company, uh, the company, which is also included in a uh, fast campaign. So the company, they got a permit renewal in 2017 without any environmental impact assessment. Uh, so the actually the Riau chapter of Wali Indonesia, they supported the fishers and also like uh, they supported them in making their signing their petition. Uh, and then they sent it to the uh, to the president, uh, the online community, they make an online community uh, through the Facebook and WhatsApp, but there was no response from the government. So this was the second one. And the third one, the third one is uh, a bit different from other campaigns because the campaign is done by the Indonesia government. So this is not from the public, but this is from the government side. So the campaign is called Sawit Bike Campaign. So it is, uh, it is a contra one. So the one when the Wilmas International and Pamoy Plantation, like the activists are doing against that, at that time, the government did the Sawit Bike campaign. So the government want to show the um, good side of uh, campaign. So uh, they want to show that Pamoy Plantation can be sustainable. Like Pamoy industry gives like massive job opportunities, like how they can make the local prosper. So uh, they make uh, they make a page on the Twitter and also like to make the diplomatic goodwill. Uh, so that uh, like many ENGOs like Greenpeace and Academy, they responded like Sawit by campaign, it is not appropriate. And also like they got criticized for that. So this is a third campaign. So now we will see the uh, first five campaign, which success or which succeed in changing the policy. So the first one is the Samoy campaign. So the effective policy change is the NDP policy and moratorium laws on Samoy Foundation. So the NDP policy is the emergence of new policy, but the moratorium law is a complete major change to the existing public policy. And another one, Jiga Lahari, so it affected one policy. It is revoking the issue permit. So it can mean that revoking the issue permit is a minor or patchy changes to the uh, existing policy. And another one, the campaign against the road through the war heritage part in Papua. So there were two changes. The first one is halting the project and encouraging the SEA, the uh, environmental assessment. And another one is developing accredited training syllabus. So the first one, housing the project is a minor or petty changes. And developing the training syllabus is a new revolution within the scope of starting policy. And another one, the Rehabilitate Who Can Mangrove Forest Rehabilitation Campaign. So this one make the forest rehabilitation and reclamation policy is a new regulation within scope of planting policy. And Safe Chef make uh, Safe Chef Indonesia made a maritime policy 2022. So the Indonesia already has a maritime policy, uh, but it is just the changes within the uh, within the same scope of the starting policy. So from this area. We can see that the new regulation within like how uh, the type of environmental policy changes, like what kind of policy changes that environmental social media campaigns do. Like the most, the most um, type of changes they can do is the new regulation within scope of starting policy because it is hard. It is like also hard to make a just a new one because uh, so the new regulation within scope of starting policy is the most 
changes. And another one is a minor of country changes to existing public policy. And uh, other two are emergence of complete new policy and complete major change. So they are the hardest one to change because of uh, environmental social media campaign. So from these two analysis, like there were, like as uh, I have explained earlier, there were four variables, like four factors we will see in this uh, campaign. So they are the physical or scientific evidence, awareness of people, trending of campaigns, and participation of interest groups. So from this analysis, it is uh, it is found of the participation of interest groups. They are the most important in success of a campaign. Like participation of interest groups involves like the business advocacy or the lobbying or the uh, local NGOs public and also international community every uh, every um, the one who uh, who got the who got any um, influence by that so participation of interest groups is the most important one in success of campaign and second one is the awareness of people like how much people get aware in locally and internationally and others and uh, other states that like the last 14.3 percent say that all four factors are equally important. And according to the analysis of the QCA analysis, it shows that campaigns which lack more than two variables, like out of four variables, the campaign who lack more than two variables, it can actually be unsuccessful. So we can see this four variable. And out of these four variable, if your campaign has lack of two variables, it is like it is possible that it can be unsuccessful. And that the campaigns are most likely to be successful if they possess all variables. So if your campaign has these four variables, so you have to make these four variables present in your campaign. And then you will get the highest chance of your campaign to be successful. So what makes the environmental social media campaign fail? When analyzing about the uh, the unsuccessful social media campaign. The first one is the lack of cooperation between communities. Like uh, cooperation between communities can be made that some social media campaign they are led by the local people only, so they don't uh, uh, they don't communicate with other communities like NGOs or other uh, help supporter like that. And sometimes that. Uh, social media campaign is only met by the ENGOs and they don't communicate with the local people. Like after they get the information, they do everything, they process everything, and then the, um, uh, the local people are left out from the process. So that kind of level of co uh, cooperation between communities, they make the social media campaign so Another one is lack of evidence. Many of the social media campaigns, they don't have scientific evidence. They only have like photos and videos and they are also not systematic. So to get international support and to get like um, big uh, like uh, UNESCO or everyone like uh, bigger and stronger cooperation, we have to get like scientific evidence. So it needs to have uh, like uh, academic support. And another one is setting high goals. So um, from the start, if it starts like very high goal, it hinders the participation of interest groups. Like the local people can think like, oh, it is not possible at all. Like it will be the, um, okay, just um, our efforts will be in vain like that. So it hinders the participation of interest groups. So setting very high goals at once, it is not good. And another one is lack of consistency, which is like very common in uh, small uh, activists. Because in activist groups, like they have, like they don't have consistency, so they it is also hard for them to always update everything and making a uh, new events every time, every week. It is also hard, so this makes the environmental social media campaign fail. So from that, we can conclude the recommendation. So the first one is combining digital and non-digital forces. So not only making the social media campaigns online, we also have to make non-digital. Uh, so it makes the, it makes more people involved and more people known and raise the awareness. Another one is strengthening the evidence. As we have said, we have to get support from the academics and also straighten the physical evidence like photos, videos on YouTube, et cetera, and also the scientific evidence. Another one is making the targeted audience have a rational appeal. So rational appeal is like making someone understand why it is needed. 
instead of like just persuasion, you have to do that. You have to do that. Not like that, but they have to understand willingly and, and they have to uh, understand and they want to participate willingly. Another one is pioneering idea. So it is also important to have pioneering idea and a growth strategy uh, so that like we can have like assigning the uh, campaigners the duties based on the analyzing their needs, professions, and interests. So it is good for the long-term consistency and also to get the international support. And most importantly, we have to remember the letter of engagement. The letter of engagement means that the engagement starts from the very small step. So there is no selectivism. So we have a very common term that is called selectivism. Selectivism is like a widely used term to describe ad of online activism with minimum efforts that are being lazy and ineffective. Like, okay, I share something on my Instagram story about a campaign and uh, someone may say that, oh, actually she doesn't do anything. She just make it like to be, uh, to make myself at like a, a good environmental, like aware person, so like that. So that is called selectivism. But we shouldn't do, the, we shouldn't use that kind of terms like selectivism. Only if it is a one-time story or whatever, like it has some effect. Like I share something, so one of my friends, in social media, they will see it and they will know it. And maybe one of the thousands of people, they get interested in that and then they do something for that. So it is also, and also the selectivism, the term can, like why we shouldn't use this kind of term because like uh, our social media campaigns are like to activate the inactive than to deactivate the active. It is not to deactivate the active. So uh, like, using that kind of selectivism and saying that, oh, she doesn't do anything, just this. So it is discouraged the first time. Also, even for people who doesn't do anything, it is like, it hinders like their motivation because, oh, I will be thinking that if I share this, people will be saying bad about me. They will say that I don't do anything, but just share this. So it hinders the motivation. So we have to always know that every change has always happened through a letter of engagement. So one time story or whatever, they will be like a uh, first time to the one time story. And another time it can be like a more stuff, like I maybe I join a group or another time maybe I donate something. It can be like that. Uh, so this is all about uh, my presentation today. And I hope that uh, you will get some ideas about how to make your social media campaign successful. And also for the newcomers, for the environmental activists, uh, I hope that it will encourage to do a letter of engagement. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Madi, for your great, great presentation. Yeah, well, uh, now we are uh, come to the question and answer session. Uh, please, for all participants who want to ask, um, please write the question in the chat box live YouTube. And now we have question from YouTube from Aish Ashia Anin. The question is, what are the factors causing the inactivity, ineffectiveness of environment social media campaign on, on public policy? Oh, yeah, please okay. thank you. Uh, what are the factors that, uh, sorry, can I just hear it again? Uh, ineffectiveness or effectiveness? Yeah. Ineffectiveness. Oh, ineffectiveness. So, uh, so as we can see here, so there are some things like they make the social media campaigns fail. So here we fail mean that they don't have effect on public policy because like, success means that they have effect on public policy. So here, as we see, there is a if there is a lack of cooperation between communities. Like, oh, not only one community can ask for that, like only local people uh, asking for that, this is, this is not effective. So it is ineffective. Only the NGO asking for that, this is also ineffective. So well, like the force of people must be combined to ask for something. And another one is lack of evidence. It is also ineffective. Like uh, I am asking for something, but there is no evidence, like there is no strong evidence. So it becomes ineffective. So another one is setting high goal. Setting high goal is like, uh, so. Uh, no people, I am doing something like with a very high goal, but no people are supporting me because they think that it is too high. So it is also ineffective. And another one is lack of consistency. So uh, so I am asking for this with strong evidence that only one time. I am not doing this anymore. There is no events anymore. So they are ineffective. So, yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, you Mehdi. 
and then we have a question again from the YouTube chat box from Alia how to attract people to participate in campaigning for the environmental on social media okay so so this is a good question so how to how to make people uh involved in this social media campaign as we have said here this is important that people to have the rational appeal rational appeal is that you have uh, you have to educate them you have to educate them like in one way or another like okay why it is important why it is affecting to you like many people don't involve in environmental social media campaign because they think that it is nothing to do with them because like maybe i saw one campaign about the real island about the fish but i will be thinking of oh, this has nothing to do with me so you have to make people understand why this has something to do with you why it is also affecting you because people only participate when they think it is also concerned with them so that's why you have to make people know to have the rational appeal why it is concerned with them and uh what will affect them if you do not do this and what affects uh like what kind of advantages they will get by doing this so uh, this is a way how you educate people properly to get involved in the social media campaign. Okay, thank you, Madi. Okay, thank you. And then we have question again from Nirmala. Yeah, uh, currently Generation Z is very addicted to social media. Therefore, the approach uh, through social media in this generation has an important role. So in order to solve uh, the environmental issue, uh, could you mention what kind of the role the government can play through this approach? Okay, so uh, wait, let me <laughs> understand this again. So the generations that they are added to the social media and what can government do to support them like that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, actually the government can do many things uh, because the uh, as you say the the youth they are like very much active on YouTube and everything. So the government can do if the government wants to know what they are really facing, what is the real struggle between the youth or between I uh, I mean the real world. They have to make like they have to um uh, uh what is that encourage people like to share their stories. Uh, so people are like very motivated. So uh, there are some uh there are some campaigns that. Uh, ENGOs are doing like the video campaigns or something like that. So, uh, so uh, if the government is taking um, taking into consideration what the youth are saying, like maybe like if a youth is sharing about like his village on the YouTube video, and the uh, government is taking actions against uh, actions on it very immediately, like maybe the administration of it came to uh, this and then see it, then people will get motivated. And um, and many people will follow him, like, okay, they will share their things on the YouTube and they will be singing like more effectively. Uh, so I think that if the governments want to uh, give support to them, like they have to, they have to make actions on it very immediately, then people will get more motivated to involve in social media campaigns. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Madi. And we have a second question from Nirmala too. Uh, the question is how to gain public trust in environmental related uh, information disseminated via the internet or social media? Okay, how to gain public trust in environmental related uh -huh. information disseminated uh, via the internet or social media. Oh, social media. Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, like there are so many misinformation on uh, internet. So we cannot trust every information. But uh, if you are like, so there must be evidence. Evidence is important in gaining the trust. So not only just saying, okay, this village is having this, 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 you have to give the evidence. And also like maybe if you are someone who is uh, making, uh, who is making the, who is a leader of an environmental activist. So you have to share the voice of the village, not your voice, but also the voice of the village. Like the village, the real voice of the village and together with the, together with the evidence. So it can, it can get more attention from the people, like not only from you, but because you are not a victim so you have to share the voice so it get the sympathy it, it is like it is also important to get sympathy from the people like the these people are really suffering this and also together with the evidence so uh, in this way you can gain trust and also like uh, reliable information you can share the reliable information yeah thank you 
Okay, thank you, Madi. And next question from Manisa. Uh, could you give the example about a real success story of handling environment issues mm -hmm. through social media approach? Okay, yes. Uh, so uh, there was like mm, the social media, uh, there was one success story, which is really great. So the success story, you can also uh, search it. It is called like Safe IU. Uh, S A B Safe A R U I U Safe I U campaign. So the Safe I U campaign is from Indonesia, but it is led by the uh, led by the or the indigenous people, and they don't even have actually they don't even have handphone in their in their village. Like they don't have handphone, they don't have electricity. Uh, anyway, they are like underdeveloped developed village, but they have they suffer that kind of like environmental aspects that the companies like making deforestation to their village, et cetera. So they know that they have to use social media. So they have to use social media so that people will help them. So what they do is like, uh, they are also, they are indigenous groups. So, so many, uh, even the public officials, like they want to bully them. Like, so uh, they come and then like, you know, uh, you don't need to do that. You don't have to do that. If you do that, we will do this, etc. So what they do is like, they don't have telephone or something. So they, uh, one of like the youth, like they write every day the, uh, with the paper, like what happens today. And then they send it with the boats, like because they are they live in island, so uh, one have to take the paper and then they have to go to the nearest city and then they have to tell it with the phone and then the one in the city they post this on social media like that. So after that, like uh, after it is like because of the passion and also the consistency, the village people they all involved in doing this job together for many months. And after that, like some uh, ENGOs, like they came to their village and also like they train people. Uh, like how to take pictures, like how to take the evidence, like that. How to take the evidence so that people will, because this is now is just the writing, right? Now it's just that they write with a paper and then someone puts it on the social media. So, uh, like some people, like ENGOs, they tell, uh, like, how to take pictures, how to make their, like, uh, physical evidence, like the really reliable information. So, yeah, they, uh, so the villagers learn it and then, like, they take photos and then they, they do it, like, from step to step. And then, like, their ENGOs, like, they also combine with the local people, but they put the local people as the leaders not the ENU as the leaders, because the local people uh, take the information, they send it, and then they share it. And, and when you see the, the Safe IU campaign, it is really impressive. And also, like, they became, like, very, they have also very pioneering ideas. So there can, like, they, you can see that there is, like, a Starron, uh, what is that? A Starron campaign, which is that because, like, they, they put uh they put a doll like uh, they made with the grass and it is like a human and they put the saron with it and then they put it into the ministry it shows that it shows that okay how the women of their villages the mothers of their villages are crying like that so it is like very much storytelling and also it gains the uh, so much interest from the international so it is one of the success story like from uh, even from a village which has no telephone, but they succeeded as they succeeded as social like social media campaign. So you can search for it, and it is a best success story. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Madi. And then we have a question again from Fitri Fajaria. Is there any? Uh, is there another effective way to campaign about the environment uh, other than through the social media? Okay, so um, social media is just one of the tools. Like social media should not be that it is not only not only the like the only tool that we have to make this uh, campaign successful. Like the social media is one of the tools, and the, we have to make like as you can see here, the social media is the one to do the information, to share the information, to make communities connect to each other, to engage people in groups, and then we have to go for the on offline campaign. So you can start with the offline campaign; it is even better because offline is always most effective. Uh, so, uh, so you can always like share people about the uh, about this kind of like information to you, uh, to uh, to the ones around you, and also like you have to uh, uh, when you have started with your own community. I mean, even in a small group, it became a, a fact for the uh, social like uh, sorry environmental campaign. So you can start any kind of environmental campaign even in offline format. It is even better. Thank you. <laughs> 
Okay, thank you, Madi. Um, I think uh, we have many questions, yeah, Madi, for yeah. today's <laughs> webinar. And then uh, I think there's no more question again from uh, YouTube Live. Uh, well, uh, Madi, please, if you still have something to say. I uh, uh, actually yeah I don't have any more as I have already told uh like okay if you are an environmental activist and you have to make sure you have to make sure that these kinds of factors are uh, like present in your in your campaign so that it will be more successful and also if you are a setter to do that so don't be afraid just do that and don't care like okay someone will what will someone think about that you have to know that you are doing something good and also uh, i hope that you can encourage other people uh, to involve more for the environmental social media campaign thank you so much okay Madi, thank you so much but uh sorry my dear we have question <laughs> again <laughs> yeah okay yeah we have question from uh, Riska Fitri, which social media platforms are most used to campaign about <laughs> the environment and the reason why? Ah, okay, good. Uh, so this is a great question. So uh, according to the results from here, like when we see the successful social media campaign, the most effective platform is the Twitter to get the international uh, international audience, like to get international attention. The uh, the Twitter is the most effective. The second one is the YouTube, because the YouTube is a storytelling. So people are more interested to that. So the Twitter and the YouTube, they got the international attention. And Instagram, for Instagram, Instagram get the most local attention. Because Indonesian people, I think they use a lot of Instagram. So uh, here in this uh, in this research, like they find out that Instagram, they can uh, really inform people a lot about the, uh, about the information and romance. And so in local, it is Instagram and also WhatsApp, WhatsApp information. And for international, it is Twitter and also YouTube video. Thank you. Okay, Madi, we have question again from yeah. Amara. Please yeah. tell us one most in inspiring environmental campaign that you ever organize, participate, or study. Oh, study. Okay, so there are like um a lot of environmental social media campaign I have been participated, but uh one of them was okay. Um, one of them was in uh like I think in Bandung. So I think in Bandung, so in Bandung, I have been like working in a project. So it is like, it is to change an environment of a village, uh, a village called uh, Nyalingdong village. So, so the village actually have, they have like full of uh, so much, uh, I mean, waste, like plastics and every other thing. So we have to change the environment of this. Uh, so, uh, and also we have to enhance the, um, uh, uh, or is that called the social standard of the social standard of the villagers? So we help them in, uh, we help them in, uh, like, um, uh, enhancing the designs and everything of their, uh, their, their own products of the village. Uh, so in this one month, actually, like, at first, like, it, it seems like very impossible. Like, the project is like one month and we have to do everything and also like changing this. So actually, what is important is the willingness of the villagers. I mean, the local people. So the local people are like, they are like very much motivated. Like they, they believe that, okay, we can do this. Like, okay, after this project, okay, our village will be changed. And they are very willingly participated in this. And also like their motivation also motivate us. Like, okay, these people trust us. So we have to do that. So after that one month, it is like we have seen a real, a lot of change in this village. And also like there was like one, old woman house that I have to live in. I live in, I mean, I walk in. So she, she sell, what is that called? The cheese stick, do you know that? The, the small like cheese stick. So, so she sell cheese sticks. So, and also, uh, and cheese sticks, her cheese sticks are like uh, very much cheap at that time. But when we are like calculating her and then also like educating her how to do the pricing and etc. actually she is actually losing. She is, she does not have any profit, but she thought she was getting 
too much profit like that. So after that time, we make a new packaging, new design, and also like making this, and also like and uh, also making like sustainable kind of sustainable packaging things. Uh, so after that, I can always see I uh, she and I always been like friends on Instagram, and I can see how she is doing now. So she became like very much. Uh, she became now very professional in sustainable packaging, and also like uh, her business is also growing, and also like uh, she is doing a lot like like small things, but a lot of good things to environment. So I think it is one of the uh, most inspiring uh, environmental campaigns I have to work. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. I think uh, there's no more question. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Madi, for uh, your question, uh, for your answer and your presentation. Okay. Now we come to the end of the webinar series uh, how social media help to solve the to, to save the environment i would like to say thanks again uh, madi for your great presentation and also thank you very much uh, audience for active participation Ho hopefully uh, we the presentation will give uh, the benefit for us thank you for your attention and see you later goodbye okay goodbye thank you so much